Hey everyone, it's Andrew Warner, founder of Bot Academy, and uh, this is an interview about how to get your first client with someone who's here to share the story of how he got his first client. He is Antonio Thompson. He's one of the graduates of Bot Academy. He's someone who's gotten a client, and I invited him here uh, to talk about how he did it. Antonio, good to have you. Thank you, Andrew. Great to be here. I am looking at a big fat zero in my notes here. And the zero is in response to the question that we asked you before you came on here, which is how many people did you reach out to before you got your first client? How do you not reach out to a client and get a client? What's your, well, <laughs> I'm I mean, a genie. I know it, but <laughs> you got to tell people. Um, so, you know, by, I'm, I'm kind of an introvert, introvert, right. And I'm not really uh, into uh, cold calling or cold emailing and one of my specialties, though, is creating content, doing Facebook Lives and videos and webinars. And so I just hosted a webinar and did some Facebook Live videos and attracted um, folks to me and then had a conversation with those who were interested in learning more about this new technology and chatbots. Let me break down your process. First of all, for somebody who is saying that he's not an outgoing or not a... Um not super social. You're willing to get on Facebook Live? It doesn't intimidate you? I'm a little intimidated yeah. today. No. Well, in the beginning, yes. When I first started doing Facebook Lives, definitely totally um, you know, nervous and afraid. But after doing 5, 10, 15, 20, 100 Facebook Lives and YouTube videos, it kind of becomes natural. And um, you know, the introvertedness just like disappeared. Got it. Okay. And when you were just getting started, what's the material that you would go over in your Facebook lives, in your blog posts, in your YouTube lives? Yeah. So I would talk about um, how um, a, a business or an entrepreneur could generate more leads through um, Facebook Messenger and show them a cool, neat way to do that a um, little bit on autopilot with the Messenger bots. How? And so what, what was the technique that you showed? Yeah. So I would talk about you know, how to you know, create a post uh, create some curiosity and uh, ask an open-ended question and then have people respond to that particular post or Facebook live video or, or um, content and then have the chat bot come in and uh, you know, continue the conversation. Meaning a Facebook post that says, here's something really interesting about my business. If you want more, comment below or if you want more, hit this link and then yeah. the chat bot goes in and that's what you showed them. Yeah, I showed them the manual process of doing that and then having to respond to every message oh, one by one. Okay. Then I said, what if you could do that and not be involved in the process? <laughs> and then so I showed them how this, you know, ManyChat and other messenger, um, you know, bot software works to automate the process for you. And so you're showing them how they could do it themselves with the goal mm -hmm. of getting them to pay you to do it for them? Yeah, because most people are lazy. <laughs> they don't want to do it themselves. And so they think it's, you know, technical and, you know, there's lots of bells and whistles behind it. And, you know, I offered to provide that service to them for a fee. Okay. Uh, by the way, that's a great technique for getting subscribers to start something and then say, if you want more, here's another way to, here's a way to get more. Um, that works for us on our blog post. I try to get every single blog post on Bot Academy to have some reason, something that's that's additional that would give people a reason to subscribe to our chat bot. So yeah. if it's a PDF, if it's more detailed, if it's a video explaining what you just saw, there's a reason for you to go to the chat bot and the chat bot will give it to you. But of course, yeah. once you ask for it, you're subscribing to the chat bot. You could always unsubscribe, but that's the way it works. Uh, so I like that. I like the format too of your, of your presentations, which is here's something really cool. Now I'm gonna show you the long way that's complicated so that you feel the pain of not having a chatbot in your life and you won't feel that yeah. this chatbot thing is ridiculous. And now I'm, sure, I'm gonna show you how the chatbot solves the problem. So yeah. that makes sense. What I, what I wanna understand then is how do you invite them to sign up with you to hire you? Yeah, so if someone at the end of the webinar or whatever, um, the, the chat bot sequence or whatever, um, I then give them an opportunity to jump on a call with me uh, if they would like to have something like that for their business. And so from there, we'd have a conversation about what their needs are. And uh, mm -hmm. if it's a fit, I would then offer my services to them. There, I'm trying to watch the chat as we're doing this. And, and <laughs> came on. Do you go, have them go to a forum so they could qualify themselves? Yeah. So actually I have uh, two processes. Mm -hmm. One is they can either complete the form inside of messenger, inside of ManyChat, or they can go outside of um, ManyChat into my scheduler, schedule a time with me and also complete the same questions there. 
And what you're doing is trying to figure out if they should even get on a call with you or if they're just too new to do it, right? Correct. And it's trying to figure out what their budget is for advertising and marketing because it is a combination of both you know, messenger marketing and Facebook ads because I do that as well. So I want to know if they actually have a, a budget set aside for, for marketing. What's the threshold that you're looking for to, to set up a call with you? Yeah. So if they have a marketing budget of between any, I say the lowest is a thousand dollars a month up to whatever is infinity. <laughs> and you're asking for a chat bot creation budget or an advertising budget? Advertising budget. Uh, just okay. to get where they're at. Because if they don't have ad, an ad budget, what does that tell you? Well, they probably, sh- well, it tells me that, you know, if they don't have an, a marketing budget, they're not a sophisticated business as of yet. And so my services probably won't be a, a fit for them. And okay. they probably wouldn't be able to afford me in terms of building the bot for them. Okay. All right. And that's something that Mary Catherine Johnson said at the live event that we did in in Austin, where she said that she's looking for qualifying questions before she gets someone on a call. And if they're too new, if they don't have enough of a budget, if they can't afford her, she and you and everyone else are better off directing them towards free material where they could learn their, they could learn some things on their own, get a little more experience yeah. and then be able to afford you. Yeah. yeah Cause my, um, my goal eventually is to get them to run some ads to their, their bot to get more subscribers. So if they haven't set aside a budget for marketing, um, scaling up might be a challenge. It's not, not, it's not impossible. Um, but it may take some more time. Can you talk a little bit more about how you demonstrated the long process? The one that doesn't involve the chat bot, uh, uh, Brian in the chat, Brian Desh, uh, Desher is asking. Yeah. So basically in simplest form, um, creating a status update, um, you know, saying, Hey, are you, I'm going to make this up off the spot on the spot here, but you know, are you looking for, let's say more leads and customers for your business? Well, I just found this awesome new way to attract more people to you. Uh, if you'd like to learn more information about it, just type something in the comment below type yes, or, you know, say you'd like more information. And when they type that information, I then go through the process of manually showing them how I would reply to every single person one by one. And then I take it the, the next step where I say, what if you could do this on autopilot and not have to reply to every single person and have an automated process where the questions are responded to using this tool called ManyChat or a chatbot. And then I show them a, a, a me doing it live, but also I have a recorded video where I actually go through and show how this works um, on autopilot without me being present. Okay. I get that. Um, and by the way, showing video for the stuff that is, I used to do demonstrations where I would go live. I would do my screen share and I would watch and I would show people click by click how I'm doing something. And I thought that that was the best way to do it because they could actually watch me making mistakes, see how easy it is to do it, watch it feel like real, which it is. And what Mm -hmm. I found was there are potential bugs. The browser is not working clearly. Yeah. The website I'm using is not working exactly right. I click on the wrong link, which then takes a moment for the site to load up. And then I realize it's the wrong link. Then I go back. Those things are a pain. I've now done what you do, which is I have videos ready to go to demonstrate the part that's critical. And I got that from you in the course. <laughs> yeah, it helps. And, and you know what I do is I give people in the course my video demo if they want to use that because it does help to have a video demo. I'm glad yeah. to hear that you that you used it. Uh, how much did you charge for your first client? My first client was fifteen hundred dollars for setup, for setup, and a five hundred dollar retainer a month. Ah, and you asked right away for the retainer so that you can have an ongoing relationship with them. Yeah, because it's con- I mean the the tool the software is constantly changing and being updated, and so you know things break. Um, there's new features that come out, like you know, all the, annou- the announcements made at the conference. Um, and so you want to, you know, be on top of your game and just give them the bells and whistles. So it makes sense to have a retainer. And it's Bryn, by the way. Sorry, Bryn. I see. Um, rhymes with when she just chatted to me. <laughs> what are some of the things that you do to earn that retainer from your clients? So obviously when things break, that makes sense for you to go in and fix it, but that's maintenance. People don't get excited about paying you for maintenance. What are some of the features that you, that you use to enhance their chatbot? Yeah, so uh, new growth tools, um, setting up new growth tools for them to get more subscribers and more leads, mm-hmm. um, you know, adding on uh, Facebook advertising. So setting up JSON ads to drive more traffic to the bot, um, adding more messages to sequences. Um, one of the things that I did recently that was very um, cool is, you know, some of my clients have awesome testimonials. 
And I said, why don't we just set up, you know, um, a string of broadcasts that share testimonials. And then, you know, when you're ready to, you know, sell a new product, um, put the testimony out there and get some more people to see exactly the benefits of what you're offering and how it can help them in their, their particular life. So definitely adding new features, um, new, more broadcasts, more sequence messages, more growth tools. Um, you know, uh, what else do we do? Facebook ads, a lot of cool things you can incorporate into um, the, the retainers. Do you do the Facebook ad buying yourself or do you partner with someone? I do Facebook ad buying myself. Okay. And that's a skill that you had before and now you're enhancing it with this. Yeah. If you knew how to buy Facebook ads properly, why not just focus on that? Why add chatbots to the mix? Um, I don't know. It's something exciting me about chatbots. Um, at first... Um, when I first was uh, introduced to the whole concept of automation and chatbots for Facebook, I was like, oh, that's going to be kind of spammy, just like Twitter and how they have the bots and everything. So, yeah, I'm not going to get into that. But after being on your webinar like four times <laughs> before I actually bought the course, uh, uh-huh. it kind of made sense to me. Like I was like, okay, this, this is a, an awesome channel. Um, it, it, it looks like that's where communication is headed, the way people are communicating um, on their mobile devices. And so I think this is a great you know, opportunity to get in early and make some, um, a lot of things happen here. So I am really excited about it and Facebook ads and messenger marketing, they go hand in hand, like they work very well together. And so it just made sense to add it on as a component of my business. Randy is asking if you allow your client to send out broadcast messages or do you manage all the communication for them? It depends on the client. Um, sometimes I'll create the broadcast messages for them. And then they can send them out um, just so it doesn't end up being an email <laughs> going out. Uh, so I'll create the broadcast. And if they want to send them out, they can. Um, or it can be part of my retainer fee where I do the broadcast for them. Yeah, people do have a tendency to write way too much in chat messages and think that it's okay. It's just not okay. You can't flood people with email length messages in chat. Yeah. How did it feel after you got your first chatbot client? I was very excited. Um, I think probably the most excited I've been in a while about marketing. (laughs) Um, Just because it it just built that belief level in the the tool and in what we're doing, um, that this is is a game changer in communication. And uh, I just just could see the the potential growth of my business just from that one client and and getting started with that person. Elon saying that... uh saying, I agree. I thought it was spammy at first, but then Andrew explained it became very smart marketing strategy. And yeah, once you start to see what a chatbot really is, it becomes exciting. It makes sense. What do you say to Elon and Randy and Bryn and Antonio and Tobias and Andre and Gary and so many people, Ron, who are watching us, if what advice do you give them about how to get clients based on your experience? I think so. I, I didn't follow the 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 um, the way you decided. You said we should approach people um, in the course. Um, I do think that's effective. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, you know, if you are, um, you know, the 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 outreach, the you know, cold call and the cold email that certainly works. And you know, follow what uh, Andrew teaches, but try to find something that works for you. Um, when it comes to getting clients, whether it's attracting them to you, you know, reaching out to people on LinkedIn, Facebook, you know, Twitter, Instagram, um, I would just say just just do something, right, to connect with people, um, whether it's cold emailing, cold calling, or Facebook Live videos, or content, or status updates, things that are going to attract people to you, or bring or um, have you reach out to them. You have to do something that's going to um, get things moving. Yeah. And what we do is we give you one approach to get clients. And as people have heard here today, there are many of our graduates who've gotten clients using the process pretty much as we've laid it out. But we understand that it's not the only way. We want to Mm -hmm. just not send you out into the world saying, I've got to figure this out from scratch. I'd much rather give you something that you'll edit and change and customize to your own approach than give you nothing. And then the other thing that I keep telling our team here is, we are not the experts. We might've been the experts in the beginning when Shane Mack said, hey, thanks for your investment in Assist. Let me show you this new chatbot thing that Facebook's putting out there. But first, promise me you're not gonna tell anyone. 
that <laughs> point, I had an advantage over everybody else almost. But now people like you, Antonio, are figuring out new methods of getting clients, figuring out new approaches of dealing with clients, figuring out new ways of growing your business. And I understand if some of it might be proprietary to you, completely respect that. And I'd ask you to keep it private. And if you shared it with me, I'd keep it private. Uh, the way that I kept Shane Mack's uh, information on what Facebook was creating before Facebook created chatbots. But I also understand that there's a lot that you want to share, that you're a person who's a giver. And our graduates are people who are givers who say, here's what's worked for me. It's time for me to teach. I'm going to teach because I'm going to help the next person. And also, I'm going to teach because I want to raise my profile. And what we want to do as Bot Academy um, leaders is learn from you, absorb what works for you, and then share it with other people and say, we're not the only ones who've got every answer check out what Antonio is doing. And what Antonio did is start off with blog posts, recorded videos, Facebook lives, and just teach the things that he saw that were working and was excited about, and then invited anyone who wanted to hire him to create it, to contact him and fill out a form and apply to get on a call with him. And at that point, Antonio was able to sell to the right people at the right time. I think it's a great strategy. It's one that we've got to start incorporating into the Bot Academy course. In fact, Marcella, if you're on there, she's our VP of operations. She's making sure that everything's going right here today. You got to yeah. add that into the course with the credit, of course, to Antonio for this model because I think it's something that we should uh, we should be teaching too. Antonio, thanks so much for for being here. And what city are you in? Uh, New York. New York. All sure. right. I, there's no conference that I'm going to in New York, so it might be a while before <laughs> I get to see you. If anyone wants to see your Facebook lives or read your blog posts or connect with you, what are the ways for them to get to know you better? Uh, they can find me on Facebook, uh, Antonio R. Thompson, and then my website is AntonioRThompson.com. Cool. Thank you so much, Antonio R. Thompson. All right. Thanks, everyone, <laughs> for watching.